I'm a remedy. So I'll continue in uh, English, and I want to thank you uh, very, very heartily for this warm welcome and the presence in particular of these uh, promising looks, the future of the children. Thank you so much for coming out to welcome me. And I should also apologize that uh, the other time I had to turn around halfway. We got stuck in traffic. Well, I don't have to tell you about the traffic here. I thought that was the worst day. Today was even worse, uh, which is one of the reasons why I must leave early, because I've added one hour to the return time, to the amount of time it took to get here. That road is something else. It's an epic journey. However, I know slow by slow, as we say, everything will return to normal. As you've been told, I'm not a stranger here. On the contrary, uh, I have a very remarkable bond with Badagri, which I don't often talk about. Uh, but sometimes I speak of my having, uh, my being on the second round of my proverbial cat's lives. Uh, one of those expended moments was when I was alone on Badagri Beach. I was teaching at Unilag, and I used to come here because of the quiet, the peace, and work, swim, uh, buy roasted fish, and just be in a certain corner of the beach. And one day I went swimming, and I very nearly did not come back. Still, I managed. So I have that very, very special bond with Badagri. Uh, Badagri owes me one life because that was a narrow, that was a narrow escape. <laughs> and of course, since then, I've been here on far more enjoyable trips, productive, uh, exciting trips, cultural. I brought a, a team here. We stayed at ASCOM and produced the play. We lived here. I've been on a, a number of festivals. I've interacted, as you uh, heard, with, um, with some of the artists and uh, cultural uh, directors here. Uh, so I, I know Badagri pretty well. And of course, my younger friend Benga used to be a ballet around here. Uh, it's distressing to see what's been happening to Badagri since I was last here. Uh, but once again, one can only hope that uh, the Badagri one used to know will be brought back to life in all its beauty, its cultural magnificence, its history, and its very inspirational ambience. And among those who will do that work, it's my young friend there, Femi Koka, the artist, a very creative, energetic, uh, and restless uh, personality. It's wonderful that we're able to come here together today. We call the coalition. We're locked, we're locked out, out when, when they wanted, wanted to meet to discuss, to discuss the, uh, the security issues of this, uh, this mission. Contrary to what many people thought, I, I was not part of that meeting. I was never invited, and I didn't even know that any such meeting was taking place. But I've since read in the papers that I was locked out. You can't get locked out of where you never were, or where you never attempted to be. It's part of these heavy rumors, and uh, unfortunately, many people got exercised by it. But I want to stress this. I want to use this opportunity, this open air, unlockable space, to say that if I had been invited, I would have been there. Because we're discussing serious issues. They, uh, they were serious people. We we're discussing issues which concern all of us, whether we are professors, clerics, children, artists, uh, technocrats. Every single individual in this nation is exercised by the security problem. And this government should learn you know, to not merely tolerate, but to assist any group of people who want to come together to discuss such issues and offer possibilities of, uh, uh, of redress. 
Uh, I have taken part, in fact, in a few like that, and thank goodness nobody came to try and lock me out of that uh, hall. But I must stress once again that one of the beauties of existence is the ability to express oneself. Uh, and it's also a fundamental, it's a fundamental human right uh, which we cannot compromise. And uh, it's important to send this strong message to this government and to the security services to stop trying to muzzle people when they come together to exchange ideas. Uh, you are reducing them as human beings and you are also reducing yourselves as human beings because it means that you are afraid. You are afraid to listen. And those who are afraid to listen usually are guilty people. That's why they do not want to listen. And so once again, I wish to use this opportunity, which is an occasion of culture, of uh, intellection, of uh, creativity, uh, to re-emphasize the fact, this simple truth, that creativity takes place in an atmosphere of absolute freedom. And the reduction of the freedom of any one of us, however small, however minor, however quote-unquote unimportant, the reduction of the rights, the expression of any one of us is an infringement, an assault on the right of all of us, whether we are part of that particular exercise or not. Having said that, I wish to thank uh, Temi Koka and this community for receiving me and also for coming out to join in this event which honors my birthday and in fact which honors my existence. Uh, a very valiant and creative effort has been made to narrate my trajectory, to narrate my trajectory through um, through a series, a collage of uh, moments in my existence uh, with quotations, uh, with uh, uh, parallel sayings by other people. But I want to caution you. I want to use this opportunity again to caution everyone. You see, it's not only, unfortunately, it's not only governments which misbehave. We ourselves, we have a tendency to behave. Sometimes the people are their own worst enemies. They betray themselves. They reduce their own dignity, their own self-worth. And they bring some of us to the point where we begin to despise even our own people, to hold them in contempt. Now, among some of the quotations attributed to me, that marvelous, uh, marvelous uh, exhibition, something which I never said. But people believed it because they read it. They read it on what is supposed to be an empowering medium, the social media. They read it there and they believed that it was true. But no, I must warn you, sometimes on social media you will even see uh, framed quotes from me with my name and my photograph attribute with statements totally plucked out of thin air or statements which represent what those people want to say but they lack the courage to say it. And so like cowards and contemptible nitwits, they steal the identity of other people. That is one extract. It may sound negative but it's a very positive one because it's provides me with a teaching platform, and I wish to profit by it. And the lesson for today is to ask all of you to be very, very careful what you believe, even when you read such material in, on the social media, or sometimes even in the papers. Because in this country, we have a most facile multiplying effect. When somebody hears something, he puts it immediately on the internet, it spreads. An industry begins. People are commenting on something which never existed, which was never said. Positive, doesn't matter. Negative, doesn't matter. Neutral, it doesn't matter. What matters is that somebody's identity has been stolen. 
and some contemptible cowards are responsible for stealing that individual's identity, putting words in his or her mouth, and thereby generating a totally non non-existent and irrelevant contestation. It's like something which happened recently when uh, somebody said that uh, I took his seat on a plane. And just a simple, minor, trivial incident, which was resolved there and there, immediately, for two weeks, this became the topic. From a flight between Lagos and Abuja, it became a flight between Lagos uh, and the United States. And so you had a situation where people were saying that I took somebody's, you know, this kind of minor incident, which then preoccupies a nation out of all the problems worth discussing, worth confronting this nation. This ridiculous little incident becomes an occasion for all kinds of pontification based on a non-existent incident. Concerning that, let me just say to you, all my life I have been giving my seat to those who are older than me where required. But nobody really attempted to take that young man's seat. All the people around just said to him is that if he's sitting in the wrong seat, it's just a one hour flight, why don't you take the seat next to him? And that became a problem. I mean, what sort of a society do we live in, for God's sake, where such an incident becomes distorted, exaggerated, and becomes the fodder for ma you know, masticating for over two weeks? The number of times. People have taken my seat on a plane. And you know I eventually live in a plane innumerable times. It's never a problem. If it's convenient, I sit where you attempt it. I don't go on internet. I don't go on social media. Nobody hears about it. So what is wrong with Nigeria? What's wrong with their heads sometimes? You know, I, I don't understand. I just do not understand. No matter, this is not a, a day for that. I'm just using them. Uh, example, this thing which is in print, which I never said, to educate all of you, that sometimes when you read things, just read that material, take it with a pinch of the salt, as we say, a pinch of salt, and then mull over it, decide whether it makes sense, decide whether the person who posted it has a private agenda. <laughs> And the significance of this is that it reminds you that I've written books. When in doubt, read my books. If you don't have a copy and you can get hold of me and I have I got spare one, read I'll, I'll send it to you. And don't just read my own book. Read other people's books so you can use them to question even what I write in my own books. Use references. And I'm speaking to you school children especially. Never turn your back on the opportunity, on the chance of reading a work which is the product of somebody's mind. Because that way you enter the minds uh, of others, you dispute with the minds of others, you examine ideas, expand your horizon, and you make the entire world, the entire universe, your own private school. Thank you so much, and thank you for this warm welcome, all of you.